there! Thank you for joining me for Yarn Bite with Nora, where I just, you know, spend a few minutes. It's just to give you an update of what I've been working on. And lately it's been kind of like housekeeping, because a lot of times we want to sit and we want to, oh, go through Ravelry and go through our pattern book, work and work and work and work, but sometimes we've got to take care of them. we got to wash them, we got to clean them, and that's what I'm going to do today. Okay, I've got a couple of pair of socks, actually very fuzzy socks. I have pets. So I do have some socks that need to be washed. Very fuzzy socks. I'm going to give them a little brush here. My, uh, we have a cat, a black cat, three brown dogs. Okay, I've got two pairs of socks. We had a very, very mild winter, so I wasn't able to use my nice wool socks very much. But we'll get started here. I have some warm water in my sink, in my basin. Then I've got some nice soak, very, very nice soak. It's a product that's made for woolen items. And I'm just going to use a capful. Don't have to use a lot. Mmm, this fragrance is called Lacy. Very nice. Put it in there. It doesn't suds a lot, so you don't have to worry about rinsing. Very nice. So, here are my socks. I am going to... You actually don't want to agitate. You just do what the name says and you soak. Now, I also have a little ball here of 100% wool and I've been making mittens out of them. I had this in my, oh, also some of my hair, not just the dogs and cats. I was making mittens out of it and I had it in my mitten bag and I also set a paper plate with a piece of sausage above it on a table and one of the dogs found it and I guess they dropped the uh, sausage in my mitten bag because I found my dog with her head in my mitten bag. So here we go. Just give it a couple of squeezes. Also, I have a shoelace. Uh, also another food accident. This is cotton, so I don't want it to shrink as well. Um, I bought some fideo, which is kind of a, it's a pasta, it's a Mexican pasta. And I like it soupy. Well, it all spilled into the plastic bag I was carrying it in. And when I tried to dump the plastic bag into the trash can, it fell on my foot, fell on the floor, made a big mess. So all I have to do is just let all of this nice, luscious fiber just soak for about 15 minutes. Don't have to rinse it. So we're going to wait, and then we'll be back. 20 minutes. I'm going to squeeze out the soak. And what's lovely about this product is that you do not have to rinse it. Here's a sock. Mmm. Smells nice. Very nice. So you'll take a towel, you place your sock in it, or your item, and then you just squeeze it. Just roll it up and squeeze it. Just roll it up and squeeze. Then roll it out. It's just damp now. It's not soaking wet anymore. And at this point you can pull out some more cat hair. Pull out some more cat hair. And then you're going to lay it flat. And if you like to block things, of course you can block it. I don't like to block. If I block, I gently block. These I'm just going to set flat. Now, with my ball of yarn, I'm just going to squeeze it. It's not going to tangle up because I didn't agitate. I didn't agitate it, so the little wool burrs didn't tangle up. And now, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to squeeze it in a towel, towel dry. Just roll, roll, don't need to wring. You don't want agitation, right? Just squeeze it. What amazes me is how quickly, how quickly you can pull out all the excess moisture. 
And here's the little ball. See, they're still individual strands. It didn't felt. Just want to take a little bit of care. There's my hair again. You just want to be careful. Not to add not to agitate it. And I'll do the rest. Oh, here's my shoelace. I'll do the rest and then I'll show you how I'm drying them. Here you can see a sweater dryer. I set it inside of my tub and I have the socks drying and I have the shoelaces are there as well. There's the shoelace. So they are drying flat. And I don't block. I don't block. So you, I, I know some people dry on their bed. Some people will dry it on the ironing board. That's what I like to do. I like to set a towel on my ironing board and set my socks or a cap or something small that I'm making, even a, a shawl. Since I don't block, I can fold them in half. And I, I sometimes put things outside if it's very, very thick so during the day so that it can dry. A, a baby blanket that I'm crocheting and I'm not happy with it. Uh, the yarn is a nice cotton. It's a 50-50 blend of acrylic and cotton and it, to me it's just too heavy and I still have some uh, ways to go so I decided I'm going to instead unravel it. So I've been unraveling it. Here we go. And instead I'm looming. This is the loom my rigid heddle loom and this is the pattern and this is one of the panels that I have completed and after I wash it this will pull in a little bit so it'll look a little bit more like a diamond. You'll be able to see a diamond here. But right now it's a little bit open and, and flat, but once I wash it, it should scrunch in and it'll be more defined. So I'm working on this. It's going to take three panels because my loom is only 15 inches wide or 16 inches wide and once I pull off the fabric, it it's about 12 inches because of the it's under tension for 15, 16 inches. So when I release it from the loom, it pulls back in to about 12 inches. And so this is what I'm doing for my weaving project. I am unraveling a crochet blanket and reusing the yarn. I have never done this before, uh, stopped a project. I always continue, I go headlong, I figure somebody will use it, but I really think this is just too heavy for a baby. So all of this yarn will be reused for a three panel baby blanket that I am weaving on the rigid heddle loom. These are the five balls of yarn that I unraveled from a crochet baby blanket that I was making. And this is the project that I am working on. Today is the equinox. It's the day when the daylight and the nighttime are actually equal. That's why it's called the equinox. Not only that, but I also drive an equinox, so it's a special day for me. So I thought I'd shoot this segment outside. It's just a beautiful 
blustery day. It's a typical spring day for South Texas. It's very warm, sunny, and very, very blustery. And what I wanted to show you was this awesome box. It is a box that has nine storage containers. I love boxes. I love storage containers. So when I saw a box with storage containers, I was hooked. It's $10 at Dollar General. Oh, it is so neat. <laughs> and I love the way the light is playing with my hair. Now I'm uh, 90 years old. Now I'm not. Now I'm 90 years old. Now I'm not. But here it is. Oh, look at that. It's a big tub. It has some little clip-on. Clip-on there. Take off the lid. And look at that. And it's so colorful. There's three little trays. And then there's a pink tray with a handle. You can just lift right out. And underneath are three separate containers with a perfect size for scissors. Isn't that awesome? So you just set that down. Okay. Put the little latches back on. The only thing it's lacking is a handle. I'd really like it with a handle, but for 10 bucks, super, 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 super. Well, I hope you're enjoying your Equinox. I'm going to show you another project that I've been working on. It's kind of a redo. I, <laughs> if I said she's still working on this. Yes, I've been working on this since uh, January of last year. I am backing it with an, an worsted. Uh, the snowflake is in bulky. And I was a little bit bothered by, I love it. I love that there's, it's lacy and it's open. But I, I just didn't see how that's going to keep anybody warm. And I don't want to use something just for decoration. I think, you know, you go to that much trouble, you want to use it. So I, uh, I made the, the backing. A square and as I was edging the pieces together with slip stitches you know it looked like it was gonna be tight because this was buckling it was buckling out but I thought no maybe it's just my imagination maybe you know what it'll settle down it didn't it buckled like crazy so I had to unravel the edge I had finished it all I added a couple of rows to my silver back square. And here's a little tip for you. I'm using double pointed needles. These are my cubics and they're very tiny. Uh, this is, ooh, this is a two. And I'm using it because I couldn't find my pins, my plastic pins. But you know what? This is awesome. Look at that. I'm using them here. It's holding them in place. and They're thin. They're not in the way. I'll just move it when I come to that spot. So that's a little tip for you. Use your thin double pointed needles. Can you see that thin double pointed needle? Here, let's put it up there close. Here we go. Can you see that? And you can use it for a, a big old pin to hold your, your pieces together. Well, thank you so much for joining me for Yarn Boy with Nora. It's always so nice that you took a couple of minutes out of your day to join me to see what I'm up to. Hey, if you have time, stop by my Facebook page, also called Yarn Boy with Nora. Post a picture or two. I'm sure the other viewers would love to see what you're up to. Well, you know what? Every project has a story, and I was happy to share mine with you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.